Brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance, let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. And if any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to him. So today, no matter what you're going through, whatever you're facing, give it to the Lord, and he will give you wisdom to, to conquer it. Even if it's a giant you're facing today, he can conquer that giant in your life. So let's all begin this service in reverence to him, and just give Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you that we can start this service refreshed, Lord, in you. No matter what's coming our way, small or big, you are always in control. You are the great conqueror. You can defeat it. So we have no worries. But we can sit back. We can stand before you. We can kneel before you. We can lift up our hands before you, Lord. worship you, one that is free. We thank you, God, that we stand in freedom before you. Bless this service today. Bless our pastor as he's in Missouri, Lord Jesus. Just be with him as they prepare to start our daughter church, Lord. We thank you, God. We praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're glad to be in the house of the Lord this afternoon, amen, to give him praise, glory, and honor. We come to worship our King. Glory to God, hallelujah. hallelujah. We shout your name, Lord God, unashamed.
Jesus. Amen. Amen. Glory to your name. Sing, sing, sing Grateful that you hear us when 
you, Lord. God, that there is a ring of fire that surrounds us. Your Holy Spirit, Lord, that it speaks to us. Father God, that today is just not another Sunday, Lord. That these moments, these seconds that pass, Lord, is not another Sunday, Lord. transparent in his presence and we're able to walk into that throne room we're able to throw ourselves and say God here I am use me worthy is the Lamb of God amen holy. amen holy 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 he says that he's holy and because he he's holy he wants to he wants us to be holy Give you the glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 It's so great to be in the house of the Lord and sing songs to our God and says, holy, holy is the Lamb. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It's so good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Before we collect our tithes and we pray for those people that they don't know God, I have a couple of announcements. And that's that at 6.30 in the morning, every Saturday, our brothers, they pray in their house using the internet. Do it every Saturday. At 6.30 in the morning. Don't forget, my brothers. So we're here too, 8.30 in the morning, every Saturday. Learning of the word of God because we need more teachers. We need more people to preach the gospel, to reach those people that they don't know God. Because that's the reason that Christ died on the cross. And it's to give the opportunity to everybody to be safe. Amen? Amen. 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 So let's pray for those who they don't know God. Let's unite, united pray. Father, I thank you for, for my brothers and sisters. Put that love in their heart, Lord. To preach the gospel. To tell those that they don't know you. That you're the answer. You're the only door to go to heaven. Father, I thank you for my brothers. Amen. Amen. And now, Lord, we want to pray for the tithes. Father, bless everyone. Or those who they be obedient. Yes, because there's more than 8,000 promises in your word. Yes, God. And he says, 
to be obedient in bringing the tithings and offering. He yes, says that you will open the windows of heaven Hallelujah. and you will pour in enough. Yes, Thank you, Lord, for those who have been obedient. And for those that they don't have a job, Lord, provide for them yes. that this way they can rejoice yes. with us. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you. Amen. You can come. You can pass. Chicago, I gave you our brother in Christ, Hector Aquiles. I got followers. Those are my disciples. How are you guys doing this afternoon? Children, you guys are dismissed. I'm not going to forget this service. Children, you're dismissed. Go to Children's Church with Sabrina's. We're blessed this afternoon. Amen. Amen. Um, something I, I preach a little bit differently than Pastor Rob. Um, so if you came expecting Pastor Rob, I'm sorry to disappoint. Um, on Friday nights, I'm the youth leader of this church. And so I preach a little bit differently. So every Friday, I have the youth stand up while we read the word. So I'm going to ask you guys to stand up while we read the word of God. I'll be reading out of Acts chapter 6 this afternoon. Acts chapter 6, verse 1. So if you have it or if you have a Bible app, I'll give you a second to open it. Um, Acts chapter 6, verse 1. The choosing of the seven. In those days when the number of disciples was increasing, the Hellenistic Jews among them complained against the Hebraic Jews because their widows were being overlooked in the daily distribution of food. So the twelve gathered all the disciples together and said, it would not be right for us to neglect the ministry of the word of God in, in order to wait on tables. Brothers and sisters, choose seven men from among you who are known to be full of the spirit and wisdom. We will turn their responsibility over to them and will give our attention to prayer and ministry of the word. Verse 5. This proposal pleased the whole group. They chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit. Also Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon. Parmenas and Nicholas from Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid their hands on them. So the word of God spread. The number of disciples in Jerusalem increased rapidly, and a large number of priests became obedient to the faith. Father, we come before you this afternoon, and we thank you because you're an awesome God. We pray, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus, that you may just have your way. Have your way in this service. Have your way in the words and move in us, O oh Lord. I pray that this message will speak to everyone that's hearing it individually, O oh Lord. That there may be an individual message for each and every one of us that need to receive it today, O oh Lord. I pray, Holy Spirit, an anointing upon this message, Lord. Have your way today, O oh Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Church says, Amen. 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 You guys could be seated. So... We're introduced in chapter 6, verse 1, we're introduced to a man named Stephen. And the Bible says that Stephen is a man full of faith and the Holy Spirit. See, Stephen was chosen to be a leader amongst leaders. The disciples at this point had gone through, they had seen the resurrection of God. They had waited more than 40 days because Christ had told them, Be still and patient and wait, for I will send you a gift. They waited for those days and Jesus sent them a gift, which was the Holy Spirit. The moment that the Holy Spirit happened, there became a movement, which we know today as a Christian movement. And they began to go out and preach the gospel. And they began to multiply. So these 13 disciples began to multiply. And they decided, we're growing too big. There's too much to do. 
We have to create leaders. And Stephen was one of these leaders. And Stephen was a man full of faith in the Holy Spirit. He was also um, a man that knew the laws. He was a smart man. He knew the laws of the land. And he knew the laws of the Lord. In, in chapter 1, verse 8, the first point I'm going to make is the, the enemy comes against us. And how many of you guys ever felt that when you're, when you're on the right path, when you're trying to do the right thing, when you're trying to go the right way, it always feels like the enemy is just always coming against us. Anyone ever feel that? Yeah. In, verse, in verse, uh, six, verse, chapter 6, verse 8, the enemy comes against Stephen. Now Stephen, a man full of God's grace and power, performed great wonders and signs among the people. Verse 9, opposition arose, however, from members of the synagogue of the freedmen, as it was called, Jews of Cyrene and Alexandria, as well as the provinces of Cilicia and Asia, who began to argue with Stephen. But they could not stand up against the wisdom the Spirit gave him as he spoke. Then they secretly persuaded men to say, We have heard Stephen speak blasphemous words against Moses and against God. So they stirred up people and the elders and the teachers of the law. They seized Stephen and brought him before the Sanhedrin. They produced false witness who testified, This fellow never stopped speaking against this holy place and against the law. For we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth will destroy this place and change the customs Moses handed down to us. All who were sitting at the Sanhedrin looked intently at Stephen, and they saw his face was like the face of an angel. I want that to stick with you. His face was like the face of an angel. The enemy comes against us. The enemy has come, and they've captured Stephen. They messed up his good name, and they told lies about him. They said that he was spreading rumors. They said that he was saying that Jesus was going to come back, and he was going to destroy this place. Sometimes it feels like the enemy is coming against us with our friends, our co-workers, our family, and it feels like they're rising up against us. See, the Bible clearly says that the enemy comes to scatter. We are not of those that are scattered. The Bible brings unity in us for one reason, so that we can stand together in this great fight. But the enemy knows that. That's the greatest reason. That's the biggest reason why he tries to scatter us, seclude us, bombard us. Because if we're standing together, then no one can come against us. But the moment that we start to turn on each other like the, the people did on him, they came against him and they turned on him. And they started looking at each other. And they started to fight each other. And that's the reason why Stephen was, was able to be captured and brought before the Sanhedrin. Let me tell you about the Sanhedrin. Sanhedrin were a very powerful group of men in that time. There were, brought, there were a group of men that knew the law. There were almost like a group of men that, that handed out the law. And they followed the law to the T. Their God was not our God. They worshipped by obeying the law to the T. They believed that you could get closer to God by washing your hands a certain way, by praying at a certain time, by doing these things that we don't believe. We believe that you get to Christ, you get to heaven through Christ. But these men believed in the law. These men were the very men that Jesus was brought to the night that he was, the night before he was crucified on that Good Friday night. These men were the men that condemned Jesus to die. And if you read the Gospels, the Gospels clearly show that the disciples were afraid of the Sanhedrin because of what they brought, because they of what they represented. And Stephen now is in a place where he's a leader. He's stepping out. He's stepping out on his faith. And because of this, he's brought before these powerful men, the Sanhedrin, the very men that condemned Jesus. But Stephen had a faith and a boldness like no one else. Stephen had a faith and a boldness that in the face of his persecutors, in the face of his trials, in the face of his problems, he stood there and he proclaimed Christ even more. What do we do when we stand before our enemies? He didn't, he didn't stand there and quit. He didn't stand there and give up. In Acts chapter 7, verse 2 through 17, he begins the longest sermon recorded in the book of Acts. He goes against his enemy, and he doesn't succumb to his enemy. He doesn't bow down to his enemy, but he stands before his enemy. See, life sometimes bring us, brings us many trials. Life sometimes bring us, brings us many pains. 
much confusion, much questions. And a lot of times we bow down to the problems, but not Stephen. He stood before them, and in Acts verse 2 through 17, he goes down a list and he says, you rejected Jacob, and you rejected you rejected Isaac, Isaac, and you rejected all of these men, Father Abraham, and these were men that God put before you, and you rejected them. Then he goes on in seven, eight, chapter 7, verse 18 to 43, and he says, Moses went before God, and God gave him a command, and he led the people out of Israel, and still you rejected him. Could you imagine that? Could you imagine that, having the boldness like Joseph to look your problem in the face, look your enemy in the face, and said, this is what you did. This is what you did when you were faced with your problems. But I won't do that. In Acts 7, 51 through 52, he concludes it with this. 51 through 52. I told you, Joseph, uh, Stephen was a bold man. And he says, you stiff-necked people. Your hearts and ears are still uncircumcised. You are just like your ancestors. You always resist the Holy Spirit. Was there ever a prophet your ancestors did not persecute? They even killed those who predicted the coming of the righteous one. And now you have betrayed and murdered him. He's talking about Christ. You who have received the law that was given through angels but have not obeyed it. Wow. See, it's easy to run from our problems. It's very easy. It's easy to hide from our problems. It's easy to quit. But let me tell you something. It's hard to be bold. It's hard to stand up, especially when you're standing by yourself. But there Stephen was, standing against his enemy, unashamed of the gospel. He could have stayed quiet. He could have rejected Christ. But he refused to because he knew too much about the word. He knew too much about what Christ had done. He knew too much about what Christ did on that cross. He knew too much to deny the good news. He knew too much about where Christ might have taken him from. See, God has taken a lot of us from some messed up places. God has taken a lot of us out of some messed up situations that we put ourselves in. That maybe we were born into or maybe we choose to go into. See, and Stephen might have been one of those people, but he knew where God had taken him out of. Where has God taken you out of? What has God dragged you out of? What mess, what situation have we gotten ourselves into that God has provided a way out? He knew too much about God to, to deny him. He knew too much about the good news to deny him. See, Stephen had a mission that day. Stephen had a very important mission that day. And that mission was for you and for me. I believe, this is my belief, that when Stephen woke up that morning, he knew what was about to happen. So none of this took him by surprise. I believe that's why the Bible clearly states his face was of an angel. His face was of an angel. Because it was already sealed. It was already done. Everything else was just a formality. And the people, they got upset and and. And I'll read you the scripture of how the Sanhedrin says that they gnashed their teeth. When the members of the Sanhedrin, in verse 54, when the members of the Sanhedrin heard this, they were furious and they gnashed their teeth at him. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked up to heaven and he saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see heaven open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. How God shows up at the right time. How sometimes we're looking for signs and the sign is right there. How sometimes we're looking for something to tell us it's going to be okay and the sign is right there. God is always on time. God is always right there in the perfect time, in the perfect place. 57. And they, at this they covered their ears and yelling at the top of their voices, they all rushed at him, dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. Meanwhile, the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. How many of you guys know that the enemy doesn't want to know the truth? The moment that Stephen started proclaiming the truth, that he's seen Christ at the right hand of God, that he's seen glory, that he's seen victory, the enemy doesn't want to hear that. 
He doesn't want to hear the truth. Our enemies don't want to hear the truth. When we say that just because we're hurting, that joy comes in the morning, the enemy doesn't want to hear that. He wants you to always believe that joy will never come. But if you look up to the heavens and you look up to the skies, you can always see that God, Christ, is still standing at the right hand of God. He's doing the same miracles he did in Stephen's life that he, he can do in our lives. God never changes. He's always there. He always provides. And so what did they do? I told you this was a formality. This needed to happen. And they dragged him out. They dragged him out of the city, and they began to stone him. Meanwhile, the, the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. I want you to remember that name for me, Saul. Keep that in the back of your head because we're going to revisit this character in a little bit. In verse 59, it says, while they were stoning him, Stephen prayed. In the middle of all this, Stephen prayed. In the middle of the trial, in the middle of his, his persecutors coming against him, in the middle of facing death, Stephen prayed. All this is happening. Stephen took the time to pray. And it wasn't a long prayer. It wasn't a prayer that, that took a half hour to do. It wasn't a prayer that had many big words. It had 13 words in this prayer. 13 words. But the power of prayer is something that we're going to see in a little bit. So keep Saul's name in mind and keep the fact that Stephen prayed. While they were stoning him, Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Five words. Then he fell on his knees and cried out, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he said this, he fell asleep. The Bible doesn't say he died. The Bible doesn't say he died. The Bible says he fell asleep. He fell asleep. His mission was done. His mission was over. That mission carries on. The process of stoning. The process of stoning happens where they take a person and they measure their height and they put them on a cliff two times as tall as them. Okay? Two times as tall as them. And a priest stands behind the person at the top of the cliff and he pushes the person off the cliff. And the person falls to the ground. And there's a, there's a priest on the bottom of that cliff to check to see if that person's neck is broken. If that person's neck is not broken, then there's a person at the top of the cliff that drops a rock. And that priest checks that person again. And the process continues. And so eventually, that person is no more. I told you the Sanhedrin were very pe people that stuck to the law. They stuck to these rules. And, and the, the reason for doing it this way was because they didn't want rocks to be falling on a dead person. Stephen, at this moment, becomes the first martyr recorded in the book of the Bible. The word martyr comes from the word martis, which means a testimony so true that the witness will die to uphold it rather to than deny it. How many of us have a testimony so true that would we, we would rather die to uphold it rather to than deny it? How many of us know God and what he's done that we would rather die than to say that, man, God didn't deliver me from this and God didn't heal me from that? See, I'd rather die than deny my faith. See, I have a faith like the faith of, of, of the, I want to have a faith like the faith of the disciples in, in the book of Acts. That no matter what comes my way, no matter what trial, situation, sickness, problems, that you're going to have to take the breath out of me. You're going to have to take the words out of me before I stop worshiping my God. We have to be a church like the church in the book of Acts that stood boldly before our enemies, that didn't quiver and cry when things went wrong, that didn't stop when the trials came, but we stood boldly declaring that no matter what, God is good. Because that's the truth, that God is good. And in the midst of all this, he prayed. See, I don't believe that Stephen, Stephen felt pain that day. I believe that in the midst of the biggest trials that Stephen ever faced, he had the power to pray. 
and to pray for his enemies. And it made all the difference. See, the, the enemy, I believe he's seen this Christian movement. I, I believe he's seen the spreading of the gospel. And I think he tried to end it with the, with the persecution or the, 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 the killing of Christ and it didn't stop. So then he's seen the disciples started to spread the name of Jesus and the gospel and he wanted to end it. I believe the book of Acts, I think that the enemy was trying to end that book in the seventh chapter of Acts. I believe that that's what his intentions were that day. This is my belief. I believe that the enemy wanted to end that, that book of Acts at the seventh chapter. This was supposed to be the end of the book of Acts. The Christian movement was supposed to be over on Acts chapter 7 verse 60 with Stephen falling asleep. That's what the enemy was trying to do. See, your story was supposed to end a long time ago. You were supposed to quit after the lights got shut off. You were supposed to quit after you lost your job. You were supposed to quit after you lost your loved one. You were supposed to quit after times got hard. You were supposed to quit after, after the world started caving in. You were supposed to quit after the divorce happened. But keep pushing forward. See, life goes on. You're not done yet. God is not done yet. See, the, the book of Acts didn't end at chapter 7, verse 60. If you turn the page, chapter 8 begins. See, your life doesn't end right where you stand. Life doesn't end in these problems. Life doesn't end in your misery. Some of us in our lives, we're in the book of Acts, chapter 7, verse 60. And the enemy has us down. And we want to quit. And we feel alone. We feel by ourselves. We feel hurt. We feel pain. We're not done yet. Third, third point. The church is scattered. We introduced you to a man named Saul. And in chapter, in chapter 8 verse 1 it says, And Saul approved of their killing him. On that day, a great persecution broke out against the church in Jerusalem, and all except the apostles were scattered throughout Judea and Samaria. Godly men buried Stephen and mourned deeply for him. But Saul began to destroy the church. Going from, his house, going from house to house, he dragged off both men and women and put them in prison. The Bible says that the stone throwers dragged Stephen and laid him at the feet of Saul. That means that Saul was a powerful man. That means that Saul was on the movement, this anti-Christian movement. He was one of the leaders of that movement. I believe that Saul seen the boldness that Stephen spoke with. I believe that Saul heard the prayer that Stephen prayed. I believe that Saul witnessed all of that. And he's seen it. I believe that this planted the seed in Saul's life so that in Acts chapter 9, as Saul was walking down the road, he seen a bright light and he fell to his knees and he instantly knew what was happening. And the voice came and it says, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? And Saul knew that at that moment, he was coming face to face with the Lord that Stephen was talking about. How many people are witnessing us in our trials? How many people are witnessing us worship in our trials? How many people are witnessing us praying in our trials so that when they get to that point, they can say, man, that's the God that Rich was talking about. Man, that's the God that Lalo praises. Man, that's the God that Tito worships. I know him because I've seen him through you. Because they see you worshiping through the storm. Because they see you boldly standing against the Sanhedrin in your life. The enemy in your life. The enemy comes to scatter. And that's exactly what happened in, in, in the book of Acts. He scattered. Because they see this. The Bible says that because of this, Saul, 
he got up off his knees and he changed his life in such a way that he became a man named Paul. Paul is one of my favorite characters in the Bible. Paul was, after this, he spoke boldly. And he proclaimed the name of Jesus. And he was a one-man gang for winning souls for Christ. And because of this day, Paul wrote about two-thirds of the New Testament. You guys can start playing. See, the enemy came to scatter. The enemy wanted the book of Acts to end at chapter 7, but it didn't. See, the book of Acts went on for 21 more chapters. 21 more chapters. But what a blessing we would have missed out if at the book of Acts would have ended at chapter 7. What a mighty blessing we would have missed out if we would have only gone seven chapters and Stephen would have stayed quiet and Saul would have never been converted to Paul. The word of God would have never reached the world. In the midst of our trials, to stand up with such boldness, to say, I know this is a big problem, but my God is bigger. I know this is a big problem, but my God is greater. I know that he will pull me through it because he said he'll pull me through it. So what the lights are shut off, I'll praise in the dark. So what the bank is empty, I'll worship with what I have. We have to be a church that is full of, of boldness, of the spirit of the disciples who worship no matter what. Who worship no matter if anyone else was worshiping with them. Church that takes a faith, that takes a faith to walk through the storm. It takes a faith that when everyone says you can't do it, to be able to say I can do it because I am more than a conqueror. For years, we've been a church that knows God, but knowing God is not enough anymore. Knowing God is not enough anymore. We have to have an intimate relationship with him an intimate relationship with them that's what drove Stephen to do what he did that's what drove the disciples to do what he did and they came against them they came against to attack them they came against to stop them because they did not want this Christian movement to continue at the end of that chapter it says that the church was scattered the disciples were scattered the enemy wanted to ch the church to die there, at that place, at the bottom of those rocks, but it didn't. The believers scattered, and they ran, and they ran. And because of that, though, when the enemy wanted to silence them, when the enemy wanted them to say no more, they ran and they hid. The disciples did, and I'm sure the enemy was saying, I got them. I won. That's the end of this movement. But because of that, the word reached Judea. And it wouldn't have reached it otherwise. And it reached Galilee. And it reached Samaria. And it reached Cyprus. And it reached Antioch. And it reached Galatia. And it reached Macedonia. And it reached Rome. And eventually it reached Asia. And eventually it reached the United States. And eventually it came to Chicago. And eventually it came so that you can hear the message of what happened that day. What the enemy intended for bad. When the enemy tried to stop us. When the enemy came against us in our lives. If we stand up and we proclaim the good news of Christ. If we stand up and we proclaim the promises of God the enemy's attacks have no bearing on our lives because we serve a God that is more powerful than any of these things we serve a God that provides and protects my God is bigger than this the power of prayer just keep going see the enemy might have had you on a cliff the enemy might have had you on a cliff and maybe he pushed you off whatever it was Maybe cancer came against you. Maybe you lost your job and you were at that cliff. And he pushed you off. And life began falling on you. And there you are at the bottom of this cliff looking up. Seeing all these problems. Seeing your family fall apart. Maybe 
seeing your career fall apart. Maybe you're at a point where you never thought, how did I get to this point in my life, God? And one by one by one, the problems of the world continue to fall apart. I need the faith that, that Stefan had, that the disciples had. And I just need you. 
I pray, oh Lord, that you may just move in their lives, oh Lord. The lives of the people that, that, that are feeling like they have no option, have no choice, have nowhere to go, oh Lord. Father, you give us an option, oh Lord. You say, oh Lord, that if we seek you, we will find you, oh Lord. You said, oh Lord, that no weapon formed against us shall prosper, oh Lord. You said, oh Lord, that you have plans to prosper us and not to harm us, oh Lord. And so right now we stand on all your promises. Hallelujah. Give him a hand to the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 This is a hospital. The church is a hospital. Whoever is sick, the doctor of doctors is here, which is Jesus Christ. Come forward. I have the deacons here to come and pray. Deacons. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's praise God. Let's praise Hallelujah.
Give it up for the King of Kings. Hallelujah. Let's praise him. Hallelujah. Can the lights come up, please? Hallelujah. Who wants to hear Hector Achilles again? Amen. 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 Great message. Congratulations to my son in law, Hector Achilles from the north side. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now we're going to be dismissed. Please can you stand up and grab the hand of the next person to you. Hallelujah. Man, when the Holy Spirit moved in his house, nobody wants to leave. But we got to go, right? Amen. Father, I thank you this morning for every saint who's here. Father, because you are here. Father, now I'm asking you in the name of Jesus to bless each of them. That you send your angels and protect them, surround them, Father. In the name of Jesus, I thank you. Bless them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Go with God. Hallelujah.